The presence of the two of us here in the studio would seem to indicate that we have survived a 2,500 kilometer road trip in a rover. Which it has to be the most shocking news of the year. And Certainly to me it is. To anyone who knows what a Rover SD1 is, the fact that we've made it 1,600 miles home, although... And a 43-year-old British Leyland product. That's sat for the best part of 20 years. Um, they don't know that actually we made it home under the car's own power yet, so mm. we should not tell them that. What you just did. Shit. Um, <laughs> why are you millennialing out on me and using your phone? Because... In a stunning turn of events, Lucid would like to um, give us money. Excuse me? Yeah, to I tell... I think Lu Lucid would like to give our, their customers money. No, no, the other way around. They, they want, want their customers money from customers okay. to give them money. But they want to give their customers money and charge them less for it. A car, they want their customer... You have your phone out. Lucid would like us to know... Oh, first thing, uh, apologies, long day here. Oh, that's the that's the start of the email <laughs> in, in which they submitted the the read. Uh, yes, so, uh, about the Lucid Air. Mm -hmm. Every car margin listener knows about the Lucid Air, the longest range, fastest charging luxury electric car in the world. It's designed in California, assembled in Arizona. Jason, you've made some videos about this car, Dad. haven't you? There's a reason you're reading this ad because I have to keep my objectivity. Journalistic objectivity? I love that thing. That's not journalistic objectivity. It is 100%. You're the one reading the ad. You just said I'm, you love it. I love the car. Is that journalistically Wait, did objective? Did I not say that long before they ever gave us a, a sponsorship? For you did this say show? That. Yes. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, you love its incredible performance, perhaps. What you might not know about, however, is the special lease and finance offers available for 2023 models of the Lucid Air Touring and Grand Touring, which allows you to get a new lease on electric. Visit lucidmotors.com for more details. Here's why you know that I can remain objective despite this sponsorship. Tell us. I don't have to pay for the fucking cars. Lucid gave me that car to test and then took it away. Didn't matter what the interest rate was. See? Oh. But your interest level was quite high. Because it's a really good car. It's done by drivers. The guys who tune the chassis are like M5 owners. I think they all own E36 and E39 BMWs. And they drift mm -hmm. and they go track days and they're... One of them's got a Camaro. But they're... No. And the car reflects that. And the car reflects that. Um, well, we are delighted that they are interested in us spreading the gospel. I am very happy to help them spread the gospel. Uh, I'm keen to try one. I'm also keen to talk about... <laughs> the uh, Rover SD1. Thirty Which reunion. could not be further uh, removed from the Lucid Air. Other than they both have sort of rakish profiles... I'm I all I can say is I hope to hell that the uh, that Lucid sells more airs than Rover sold SD ones in the US. That's not a high bar. No. And no. now you have touched perhaps three of them. Rover SD ones. Three US SD ones. Uh, yeah. I only touched two. Oh, the red one expired. Yeah. But prior I touched this to... one a lot. Yes. Twenty six hours of touching. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Well, stay tuned if you want to hear about the 26 hours of touching that Jason did on this, the 102nd episode of the Carmudgeon Show, Part presented by Derek Tam hyphen Scott. That's me and Jason Camisa. Yeah, that's me. That's you. Part of the Haggerty Podcast Network. I'm going home. No, you're not. Ah, shit. You have an hour You're of rovering. After you do what? Help. <laughs> <laughs>
So a car that effectively, we don't know when those 100 kilometers were. That could have been done in one day and the car sat for 15 years. There's one receipt says the car had not run at all in five years. Yes, from 2020. From 20, right. So we know it from 2015 to 2020, but from 100 kilometers and 10 years prior to that, by all intents and purposes, this un notoriously unreliable car sat for 15 years, was resurrected, got a couple parts thrown at it, a fuel pump, a distributor um tires tires and brake fluid and then we drove it further <laughs> in three days than it had gone in the previous 20 Two decades years. Yeah. yeah yeah that's and it's a car that was notoriously unreliable when new when, when new so, i don't und i mean i i'm sure that i bit your head off at one point or 30 for <laughs> no seeming reason and that's because my stress level was like you're you're in <laughs> the way i sort of process this afterwards like think about like you're in a theater and you're watching a suspense thriller movie mm -hmm. and you know the bitch is getting killed right yes. at some you point you don't know how you don't right, know why or an where or when will fall out of the sky and somebody slash everybody is getting killed mm -hmm. that stress level for three straight days <laughs> really wore on me because i knew at some point we're on the side of the road and the question becomes how quickly do we get the flares out what country right? are we in the, the reflective vests on how do we get this car off the side of the road without catching everything on fire and being that we were driving through fire areas in both canadia and wherever the hell else we were oregon like idaho how do we get the car far enough off the road that a tractor trailer doesn't hit us we don't light anything on fire we don't get killed and we have cell service to get a tow or can repair the car on the way out and so it was just one three-day long pan panic build <laughs> how did you sleep jason i didn't i still haven't i still haven't i mean it's been like a six hour a night like terrible sleep since this whole since the night before this adventure started yes uh it was deeply inadvisable <laughs> the whole thing just wh wh purchasing the car yeah and everything else absolutely okay. all of it uh so all right so should we start from the beginning on how we decided to purchase this car yes okay. one, we did talk about this how this arose on a night of my rally yep. and one of my instagram followers who lives uh somewhere between the canadian border and calgary mm -hmm. had watched the rover v8 episode in which you expressed an uh, undyed and undead <laughs> and a zombie Continued. Desire, yeah. <laughs> desire to own a rover sd1 yeah. uh and so he sent this link over to this sd1 and i thought you were gonna be like oh look an sd1 that's in canada how amusing there's one left and then you and our friend jinsu were like let's do it and i was like are you sure i mean when i saw that it had 40 what 40, 48 48 000. 000 kilometers on it and that it was blue and wasn't a rust bucket and I think reported to be one owner. Well, I mean, yeah. the, the fellow that we bought it from, his grandfather bought it new, reportedly. Reportedly, yeah. Um, yeah. There were some other reported things that were not exactly... Reporters yes. are not always accurate. Um, yes. But I just thought, I'm in. I'm in. It's a... It's such an emotional play for me because mm -hmm. it's been, and it, I, I think it occurred to me after we recorded that last episode, 30 years to the month since yeah. I've driven one. June um, of 93. June of 93, high school graduation. And so now I have to look up those fucking pictures. Um, but there's, uh, you know, I've seen one since. I saw one at a lemons race once. I saw a guy that I know has two, a Euro one and a US one, and I pushed it across the parking lot for him. Um, but I haven't driven one. And so I just wanted that experience and split three ways, me, you, and Jinsu, the amount of money to, to uh, procure this car Procure, procure to purchase to just purchase not procure okay, purchase. Fair enough. <laughs> to, to just go and have the experience of, of a potentially disastrous road trip was worth the spend right yes. we could have yeah. each spent that money and not gotten anything back out of it like the car could have burned to the ground with no insurance on it and it's still i think going before we got there in real life i thought that could be worth the expense people spend two thousand dollars you know on a on Vacation. a couple days a couple days Disneyland. in hotel. right and they have a great experience we're gonna spend airfare and car and gas and everything i don't know what's our total bill 2500 $2, bucks 2500 bucks for an experience and if mm -hmm. we get the car home and it for example has a, a lot more miles on it than it was advertised with or just for example up, for example <laughs> <laughs> that's uh <laughs> we're planning pre-saging pre-saging um who cares who cares it would be worth an experience 
what I didn't factor in is the emotional toll of stress. <laughs> this is what damages are when people file lawsuits. Yeah, the emotional, <laughs> emotional distress. This is pain and suffering. Yeah. So, anyway, so we agreed on the price. We had a bunch of wire transfers go totally wrong, horribly wrong with the uh, for the deposit. And the seller wound up being super flexible in the end. And He just, was initially very skeptical, it should be said. He yeah. was like, who are these clowns? Right. Who... Yeah. It was more his, it seemed like more like his dad was like. Stranger you, danger. Right. He just had some stranger danger, internet stranger danger. You can't show them the VIN. This was the final breaking point was when, when the his dad told him, you can't show the guys the VIN or show them any part of a. Uh, ownership documentation. Ownership documentation at all because they'll steal the car from you. And that was the point at which I was like, all right, we're calling him. And I'm like, listen, <laughs> we're on a podcast. Like we're, I work for an Entire insurance company. Entire dozens of people know who we are. It, it, well, a couple at the airport. That's our, the next thing. But I'm like, this is we're not stealing your fucking car. You, but if you don't give me a VIN, I don't get insurance. And if and, I don't get insurance, I don't get a moving permit. If I don't get a moving permit, I'm not fucking driving this car across a fucking border with no <laughs> insurance on it and yes. no registration. So suck it up and give us the VIN or toodles. Mm. I said in a much... You were much nicer, much than, nicer that. than that. But that's what my intent, my intent was. I played bo- bad cop slightly. Yeah, you did. And I was... I was go- Look, either way, it worked. So we got the VIN, which was incorrect. <laughs> that's right. It had a- additional... In Three addition digit. to the car having more miles or kilometers than advertised, the VIN also had more digits than well, advertised. advertised. <laughs> and so we'd show up with insurance documents which don't have the correct VIN on well, them. Well, and I had pre-filled out all the purchase paperwork. So the deal was he, he was meeting us directly at the airport. We were going to land, walk outside, sign the documents, and fuck right off towards the border. Um, mm-hmm. It was pouring rain. It was um, like 47 degrees, 47 which is degrees. 8 degrees Celsius, yeah. freezing. The, the, look at you translating into world units for the, our audience. Yeah. For once. <laughs> um, and so, of course, we had to rewrite this, the purchase documents. Thank By God hand. I brought spares. But then mm-hmm. it was like a call to Haggerty, like, um, the next morning. <clears throat> um, so like, that car that you gave me insurance on, well. It doesn't exist. If you, in case you notice that that VIN is not, this is, it's a 1980. So it's right, pre- so it doesn't have a 17-digit VIN. Yeah. So there's whatever format Rover decided to give it, which was sort of ameliorated for the purposes of the original Augmented. sales document. Augmented. So anyway, yes. um, we got the car and I really, so the other funny thing was we get, we get, we land, we come out of customs. Well, the day before we land, it should be noted that he's like, oh, by the way, there's spare wheels and tires. So there's no space in the car for anything. He had sort of mentioned that before. So we had a very, very cursory PPI. Um, mm-hmm. We'll just put it that way. Um, where the guy noticed nothing, basically. But he did say, the seller said... Uh, he confirmed that the car existed, which he, when you're buying a car remotely and sending money off into true. the ether is important. Yeah, that's true. He confirmed and he drove it, it and he said it, it. that it drove. Spectacularly, which turns out it wasn't wasn't really wrong no but yeah, and he sent a video of it driving so like that was that was totally worth the 150 bucks or whatever we sent him um but the where the hell i was gonna talk about something oh yeah so we get to the airport we fly we land we walk out of customs and there's some fucking guy with over the whiteboard that says angry italian and the handsome one yeah. and you walk right past him and i'm like yeah, i was like trying to see the car and i'm like oh no <laughs> I was I was not reading any signage, nor was I expecting anybody to be meeting us. This uh, so this is uh, sublime surfacing on uh, on Instagram had had looked at. I made a bunch of Instagram stories. By the way, this whole thing I should say is fully documented on Instagram stories. I think it was ninety something posts. So if you go to my Instagram, there's a highlight Highlights. reel called Rover SD One. You get to see it. Some pretty cool photos. Some pretty funny stuff, um, including Derek. Um, uh, what is it? Expressing the Rover's anal glands. Yes, because um, everybody makes dog jokes because it's called a, a rover. rover. And so all of the yeah. original press materials, you know, rover they, they, they yeah. yes, make some rover, kind of rover. reference now to you dog. Can come over. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so he we walk outside and there he he had saw that he saw that we were at Air Canada and knew that we were flying from San Francisco to Edmonton, mm-hmm. put two and two together, figured out the flight number. There's one daily flight. Well, yeah. And there he was with a sign. And mm. I was initially very um what's the word alarmed freaked the fuck out yeah mm. um, but it turns out totally great guy really funny had canada uh, hats for hats us for so us. we could blend in yeah um that was really really fun uh mm-hmm. nice guy to meet uh and then we walked outside as the car was pulling up mm-hmm. I, I took video of it i just got a little like uh, uh, <laughs> like there it is we we're here we're 
Oh, I had a actually, very different reaction when I saw it, which was like, what have we done? Oh, my God. It slithered by and the profile is so beautiful. I was just like, remember, memory play for me. Yes, right? yes. 30 years. Right. I have no personal connection to this color. I was like, that color is so vivid. And mm -hmm. it, you know, it was this dreary, rainy evening. Mm -hmm. And the car slithers by and it's just boom, boom and blue. And I just melted a little bit. Yeah. Um, I mean, I saw it moving under its own power and I was like, holy shit, <laughs> look at that. <laughs> Slash, what have we done? Yeah. Um, I mean, I've always, I, I know, I've known always what an SD1 was. Like as a child, I would read British car magazines mm -hmm. a lot. And so that car was covered extensively, even though it was very much an obscure footnote of a car in the United States. Uh, it has a fair amount of sort of mental space, I would say, oh, yeah. uh, in England oh, uh, and in the, the enthusiast culture there. I mean, from 76 to 86, they made three, I think, it was 300,000 yep. of them. 1,254 came to either the US or North America in total. But so the car didn't exist here, but it was right. a huge thing. Plus, the cops drove them mm -hmm. in the UK. Yes. So everyone knows what an SD1 is, yep. I would assume. Um, yes. And the one thing that this car proved beyond a shadow of a doubt is nobody in America knows what the fuck this thing is. Yeah. What's that? This So <laughs> that became our running joke. We're like, it's like a, a Land Rover without the land. Like yes, just, you're not landed gentry. You're not even gentry of any type. You are... You're renting. Yes. You're renting you're an right. apartment, so you have a rover instead, instead of a of land. a land rover, right? You um, don't have any land that needs right. patrolling. Right. <laughs> uh, so yes, th that was the, the the contextualization to a random American strangers and Canadian strangers about what it was, is that it was the non-landed The other rover. thing that I found interesting, so I, I didn't expect it to get as much attention as it did. Yeah, people were very interested and enthusiastic and positive. Smiling and, and yeah. what is that and excited about it yeah um i think the color is part of that yeah because it's so vivid but the other thing that i thought found so interesting is everyone thought it was from the 1990s oh really i didn't everyone. hear anyone it is oh that's like an early 90s or whatever the car went into production in 1976 mm -hmm. it's old it's yes people are more than 15 years off and i found that really interesting um well, when you think about other things you could buy around the same time it was a pretty avant-garde shape yeah. GM X body cars, notwithstanding. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I think other than the front end, which those US headlights are just, that would ruin, frankly. Um, yeah, I found that growing on me. You know, I think that people are like, you have to put US bu Euro bumpers and Euro headlights on it. And I was, <laughs> Jinsu kept calling this the stepping stone SD1 because he was hoping, you know, that the, the ultimate SD1, it should be said, mm -hmm. is the Vitesse. And the Vitesse was introduced for the Series 2 in 80, I don't know, 2 ish. Two. Uh, and you get the lattice wheels and 190 horsepower and. You Instead know, of 130. Spoiler. 133 for the US cars, mm -hmm. 155 for Euro mm -hmm. early cars for three and a half liters. So you went from 155 to 190 horsepower. Uh, and it turned the car in the, from the US version from about 10 seconds to 60 into a reportedly 7.1 seconds yeah. to 60. That's a huge, car. three seconds off zero to 60 is yeah. huge. Yeah, so that is probably a spicy meatball. And so I think that's part of, so the, the combination of the European aesthetics and the 190 horsepower, the, you know, 50% more horsepower option, you know, is part of the stepping stone SD1 I comment. I am very happy now that I, so the big question for me was, will I like the car now? Mm -hmm. Right. And because I have no idea. I drove it when I was 18, 17, 17 the last time. Mm -hmm. um, if I still like now I can say and we'll talk more about this. I like it enough that I will buy you two out and you guys can go have your Vitesse and I mm -hmm. will hot rod the fuck out of this one because it's a V8 and it needs a lumpy cam and mm -hmm. like minimal bags. exhaust. Blah, 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 blah. Especially to have that sound come from a car that doesn't look like it should sound that way. Yes. It's hilarious to me. Yeah. I so. quite agree. Uh, it, I think we I mean, when we got back. I was truly just in disbelief. I just, I was like, I can't believe we're here, like, on the, like, because before we set off, we said, best case scenario, here is the time that we will make, and here's where we'll be at various times, and this is when we will get home. But of course, we made no hotel reservations or anything, because that's Correct. just best case, like, like, high in the sky, never I felt happening. aggressively optimistic making a hotel reservation two hours in advance. Right. <laughs> like, every, was, like, and you was, know how superstitious I am, so every night, I'm like, fuck, don't do it. Fuck, just wait. Just wait. Just wait. I know. I, I would basically be at dinner and be like, okay, now I'm going to make a reservation <laughs> Uh, for 80 miles hotel. away, is that okay? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, and so I said, best case scenario, we'll make Spokane. Uh, we, we'll, we'll make it to Calgary the first night. Mm -hmm. We'll make it to Spokane the second night. Uh, and we will make it to Klamath Falls the third night. And we hit all of those milestones. I said, best case scenario, we'll be back in time for dinner on Saturday night. And we 
to I had everyone's dinner shop. at home Saturday night. Yeah. To ever, like, no one would have believed this. Yeah, truly yeah. in disbelief that it happened. Um, the other thing was that no one was allowed in my presence. No one was ever allowed to say anything nice about the car. Yes, I'm like, they no, I'm exactly you. the same. Right, exactly the same. Every Jinsu, I kept like, oh my god, this thing, ru- it just runs perfectly. Shut up, <laughs> shut up. I, th- I think I told him to. It's amazing. We're still friends. I I continually told him to shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Don't fucking taunt it. Um, yeah. Yep. So, all right. So we leave the airport. My first. It is pouring. It's pouring rain. The and wipers freezing. are quick. Yes. It wasn't like like seventies Volkswagen or eighties Volkswagen wipers that are yeah, like, where they're <laughs> like every time they yeah you're like this is going to be the last time they go across the nope. screen. They were just whoop, 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 and yep. everything we reached for worked. Other, we knew the rear windows didn't work from the PPI. Yes, the power windows. But everything else just worked. Including the, the demister, headlights, wipers. The demister was... Rear demister. Rear demister, yeah. The, yes. the defroster for the front was a little bit... But we right. corrected that. Jinsu plugged back in a vacuum line and to something, f- and then and it, you all just of a sudden heard the like, vent go... F- 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 and then yeah. there was defroster, front defroster. AC didn't work, we knew that. Yes. Which would have been really nice that first night, because it was... Misty. 50 degrees, 40-something degrees, misty inside the car. Little did we know, pouring water into the back. The yes, trunk. into the trunk. Yeah. Um, but it it drove, thank God those tires were new, because there was standing water everywhere. It was... It was, it was quite sketchy. Quite sketchy. Heavily raining... Yeah. Yeah, with passing of uh, semis. But I mean, you think we got to that first restaurant and all, I just hopped out in the rain mm-hmm. and I took a picture of it because holy shit, it made it to dinner. Like that yes. was the joke. It, made yes. it, it was what, maybe All of an miles. hour. It was, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah I, don't, I, think, I don't think we had quite done 100 kilometers and we were super excited about that. That it had um, made it, yeah. And then you fucked the trunk lock up. Oh, yes, I did get the key to the... Tr- so the, normally there's supposed to be a handle that allows you to open the trunk when the car is unlocked. Mm-hmm. It is inoperative. The only way to get the trunk open is to use the key. Uh, and <laughs> so I used the key and then couldn't get it out. And oh it was pouring God. rain pouring. and freezing. And we're just like, let's get the fuck out of here. Let's pull the, this key. Fortunately, it has a separate ignition key from trunk key. We just left the trunk key in the... Yeah. Oh shit! I didn't think about that. Imagine if we if it didn't have different keys, which I think we found out why it has three different keys because it was, <clears> it stolen, was stolen in what eighty four or eighty three or something. Yeah, sometime in the nineteen eighties. Yeah. From uh, so the car was always serviced at the dealer, which was Anglo Canadian Motors, and which had seventy four different brands attached to it, including yes, Lada, Lada, which is hardly Anglo American. Yes, it's neither Anglo nor Canadian. Right. Uh, but it, Mini and Rover and Jaguar MG Triumph, Triumph Jaguar, yeah. uh, were all part of this franchise. Anyway, well, I, it was fun. I was, uh, you know, in, during our many hours, probably 25, 26 hours of motoring time, I was going through the invoices and reading them aloud. Uh, and that was one of the highlights was getting to that one. Vehicle was stolen and then recovered. General and ra- check over. And they ran it dry. So they put, put new fuel pumps in it. Yes. One of the 75 times. The fuel, <laughs> fuel pumps, pumps and fuel car. filters were replaced. So this in the car. was the U.S. car was L Jetronic. Yes. Uh, Bosch L Jetronic. Basically Bosch Metronic predecessor. Right. Motronic means, you know this, right? Fuel injection plus ignition computer together. Mm-hmm. Jetronic is just fuel injection alone. So this mm-hmm. is L Jetronic, which means it uses a barn door. For, yes, like for, barn door, and it has yeah. an ECU, right, as um, opposed to CIS. But all the other rovers at the time, for everywhere other than the U.S., were SU carbureted. carbureted. Um, so, like, first of all, the part that bothers me the most, it's all Bosch shit, but it was not Bosch. It was Bosch licensed to Lucas, Lucas which yes. gave them the license to fuck it up. <laughs> yes. I knew that was going to be. And they didn't, it seems. I think the car, other than a little tiny stumble Mm -hmm. when cold and a little tiny itty bitty misfire when you're like at 2000 RPM and no load. Very light throttle. Uh, You get a little, you don't hear it, but you kind of feel it. The car. I mean, what is the vintage of the spark plugs in there? That could be as simple as spark plugs. The last change was 2000. 99 i think for oh, the spark plugs, plugs. Yeah. yes um, i noted old. that while we were driving i was like wow these spark plugs are Vintage. um of drinking age yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah no they it, can rent a car I, it literally ran not one stumble misfire stall. always started yeah yeah um and then didn't have the idle control valve problem that a lot of Metronic it, it cars does. no but like when you put the clutch in and the car oh, turns oh, off yeah. it never did that yeah but it does do oh, oh, oh. yeah it you surges notice? it surged it stopped doing it by it itself just, yeah it just needed to be driven 
Italian tune up to itself. I yeah. bet next time you drive it, it'll do it again. <laughs> we'll find out. Um, but the, uh, the, 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 all right. So let's go through some of the records because they're kind of hilarious, right? Mm -hmm. So the car. Theft recovery. The theft recovery was funny. And actually, I was going through one box. I haven't actually gone through it. So I will, of course, put a binder together with chronological everything and then put it in a spreadsheet. A spreadsheet. So we, know. we did actually in the car put it in a spreadsheet because we were just trying to figure out what the potential problem areas were. And the funny thing is we went through hell. We wound up buying three different fuel pumps for this car. None um, of which we used. None of which we used, thank God. But had we not had them, the fuel pump would have failed. Yes. The third one was a total panic purchase because I'll we'll play the video. I have never heard a fuel pump doing this. I don't even know what the hell was happening. It sounded like... It wasn't like, a happy camper. No. Um, and Bosch, Bosch fuel pumps tend to get loud when they get hot. Mm -hmm. So it was hot, really hot. And they also tend to get loud before they fail. Yes. Those are two things that are definitely... we. It was hot and it was failing. And it was the... Nyang, 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 grinding noise that it was making that was just truly scary as fuck. So we couldn't... And so we were I, in East Nowhere... I think that was actually West Nowhere, um, which is <laughs> further away. <laughs> no, yeah. I mean, so we the, the the original pump that we ordered came into Napa, and I got the the text from Napa: "Your order is ready for pickup." As we were taking off, like as we were taxiing to the jetway, uh, taxiing to the runway, that pissed me off. I was like, "Fuck you!" Yeah. We, so we did have the correct fuel pump ordered the night before because we left. I failed to. Yeah, I was busy writing scripts for revelations. All right. So anyway, so that was, we thought you can't actually get, you can't look it up and say, what's a correct fuel pump for a Rover? I mean, Napa did tell us something and we guessed that it was the right, no, it was Rimmer Brothers. We looked it, it up on Rimmer Brothers, Brothers in the UK and yes. then we found a cross reference to that part number and hoped to hell that it was the same thing. But all Bosch 580 fuel pumps will work because it's the right pressure. The question is what fittings are under the car and that we have no idea. Correct. So we ordered a pump that we thought would work. We wound up buying a second pump before we got on the plane, we stopped at that Napa. The order wasn't there yet. And we ordered a second pump that was an in-tank pump, but same Not pressure. an in-line pump as the one that, that is the car is fitted with. Yes. So we said, what the fuck? Worst case, we MacGyver it. Yes. And then when the fuel pump got really loud, I'm like, okay. Now, this is when I had the semi-nervous breakdown. When I'm like, we stopped in a shop. They we you, we couldn't get to the fuel pump because it's so far under the center of the car and there's all these heat shields in the way and it's the jack for that car is a single post widow maker i'm not getting under the, i'm not dying under a rover sorry so i asked a mechanic shop like hey can you guys do us a favor and take a look and we just blow out the air, blow out the fuel lines maybe there's it's plugged on the way from the tank and they're like we don't have any techs here like everyone called in sick or whatever and I'm like, okay, can I pay you for lift time? And I'll do it. And she's like, there are cars on all the lifts. I'm like, can I move the cars off the lift? <laughs> Push them out of the way. And she's like, no. She, I'm like, where's the closest town? She's like, an hour and a half that way. Fuck. So we wound up driving to that town. I don't remember what the hell it was called. Madras. Madras. Um, Madras, probably. Madras. It's America. Oregon. And which had, was that the one that had the most beautiful? Nope, no. That was the second one. This okay. was the one that was the least beautiful. <laughs> But very charming people. Very wonderful people. And I'm like, okay, now this is pull out. the. This is ripcord, parachute, get out of jail. Like, we need to be able to get this car down the road. So we bought a five-gallon five gallon jerry can. Can't believe I'm admitting this while I work for an, an insurance company. Uh, a five-gallon jerry can for, for fuel. 25 feet of fuel 25 hose. 25 feet of high-pressure fuel hose. 50 feet of wire. 25 Electrical black, wire. 25 red. <laughs> red, crimpers, butt connectors, terminals, o o like O-ring terminals. The idea was we would just directly wire, and an inline fuse because safety first, we were going to wire that in-tank pump directly to the battery with a fuse out there. We were going to dump the, the, the in-tank pump directly into the jerry can and pump 35 PSI or 65 PSI worth of fuel to the fuel rail and back into the jerry can. And just Because it has a, a return system. This yep. is how the system works. And just maybe die in a fire, but also possibly maybe get home. Yes, or to the next town. Thank God we didn't have to do this. In the next town, another hour away or whatever it was, we then bought another in-tank pump. Yes, in, in Redmond, mm -hmm. Oregon, had a beautiful Napa. I mean, I'm tempted to move there. It was the most beautiful car park store I've ever seen in my life. 
Um, yeah, but luckily we didn't have to use that. Except for Canadian Tire. Canadian Tire is Canadian Tire was awesome, but it wasn't that good. Wasn't that well stocked for um, automotive? Okay, we were all excited about going to about going to Canadian Tire eh? because it's huge. It's like a Walmart of car parts, but mm-hmm. the car section in the Canadian Tire has shrunk to one quarter of the whole store. Yes, yes, it is mostly a home improvement and kayak store. Yeah, uh, kayak and stand mixer store. And probably stand, tires. Stand mixer store. <laughs> yes. Didn't that was one point to say we'd said we were going to start packing kayaks and sand mixers? Stand, yes. I think we were. We well, we were fumes. just really going overboard on buying. Um, the car just kept getting heavier and heavier. And I was like, this car is riding so low. And there's just, you know, three humans in here and a set of wheels Scraped and tires. On everything. Uh, and then, of course, the last day, Jinsu was like, we should have uh, dismounted the t- snow tires from these wheels so that we had less weight and more space in the but truck. But he's right, except that you know damn well if we would have thrown out three perfectly good tires. That we would have gotten a we flat. We would have gotten three two flats, flats right. immediately. <laughs> like, yes. just, not, just shut up. We like, the back seat was completely, and the car was just completely jam packed with everything. Under under the floor in the trunk, yes. above the floor in the trunk. In and the we got progressively better at engineering the space use that we yeah. figured out if we removed the cover from the spare tire, you could put two spare tires on top of each other, yeah. thereby increasing the trunk area by and like 50%. fill the inside of the rims with alternator, alternator yeah. the alternator that we, we brought. brought. Yeah, which wouldn't have fit because somebody modified the alternator bracket. Yes. 20 years ago that's fun that's a funny one going through the bills it's like you know cust- <laughs> the customer says check alternator making a noise uh and then a month later replace alternator with no, new rebuild, lo- rebuild alternator, alternator with new bearing or right. something like that and then they're like alternator still it's, making a right. noise uh replace it with a lucas one and then yes. a month later <laughs> replace, replace it the with lucas a delco with a delco one and then there was a mitsubishi one there was some other one i mean yeah the car has consumed a lot of alternators mm-hmm. A lot of fuel pumps and fuel filters. Which might have all been uh, p- preventative. We don't know. But might have. Actually, I think one of the first receipts when the car had like 400 kilometers on it was that the fuel pump was making all kinds of noise. Which no, that was the second for. odometer's 400 kilometers, not the first odometer's 400 Wasn't kilometers. Wasn't the third odometer? Oh, th- it might, no, I think it was it was either the second or third odometer, I, not the first odometer. <laughs> okay, so I guess we should probably talk about this. <laughs> the odometer. So the car, the ad on Facebook said 48,000 kilometers, one owner. Mm-hmm. The PPI guy wrote to us in a text, odometer replaced at 4,200 miles, yeah. which then had us convinced that our car was a U.S. car. Yes. Because, I mean, they're so rare anyway. We're like, and the, the seller said his grand grandfather was American and had split his time between... California, Hemet. Hemet, California, and Edmonton, Ontario, mm-hmm. uh, Alberta. So we're like, oh my God, this is a U.S. car. It'll be that much easier to smog and get back in. It's coming home. Mm-hmm. And then we pull out the car and driver and we're like, because there's a the car and driver in the car and it's the same color and it's the same interior and it's same wheels. It's the same everything. We're like, it's our car. It's our car. How many of these did they sell? And then I'm like, oh shit. So the, the, the road and track car is blue. And so is the motor trend car. Shit. This car has got a lot of instrumented testing. We're going to have like a drive shaft replacement issue. Like the diff is going to be fucked from all this, you know, acceleration testing. Um, And then, then we're like, wait a second. U.S. cars got a union jack on On the front front fender. fender. This is a V8. And Canadian cars got a V8 badge, which I think you read in on Wikipedia that Uh, U.S. cars had a union jack and Canadian cars got a V8 badge on the fender. And I'm like, okay, well, that could be replaced. But then the ultimate damning thing was... You were looking at the photos again and you saw that the car, the subject car did not have a sunroof. And ours And our car does have a sunroof. So that's not the test car. It's not the test car. But then when you open the door, it says this car conforms to all federal motor vehicle standards and EPA standards. So it's a U.S. emissions car. But obviously for Canada, there was some other, there was some other damning thing that we decided it has to be Canadian. It doesn't have cruise. Well, no, it was the owner's, the, the owner's yes. manual pack said Rover Triumph of Canada. Not the owner's manual, the, the radio, radio manual. warranty. Yes. So we're like, okay, so the radio was Canadian spec. <laughs> so for the car's probably It's Canadian in the spec. owner's manual pack with all of the rest yeah. of the stuff. Um, so we figured so, out. yes, it's probably a Canadian car. Probably a Canadian car. Although we have no purchase, we have no documentation. Prior to 1983. Yes. But we have 83 on. Yes. Okay. Huge stack of records showing many fuel pumps and alternators. And odometers. And many odometers, <laughs> but not much else. So yeah, so there's... So the deal was the car had 50,000, 51,000 kilometers on it. And the owner noted that the odometer was ticking, which is funny because 
We that noted. We had noticed ours our is odometers ticking. But it was ticking, and then they replaced it 1227. It was like December 27th of 1983. Replaced the odometer with 51... 924. On it. And we're like, okay. Yeah. 51, but then why does 52. he say somewhere else, handwritten on an envelope, odometer replaced true mileage plus 52 and change? Mm-hmm. And we're like, oh, he just, you know, fucked up. No. A month later, 426 kilometers later, yeah. they replaced the replacement odometer because it was also ticking. making a noise yeah. and the needle was and bouncing, bouncing, which ours also does. So they replaced Only at those speeds. Yeah. So this car's had th- it's on its third speedometer and it's not a 48,000 kilometer car. It's a 103, which is 60 something thousand miles. So, well, it's 103 now. Yeah. Yeah. It was on 101. So, it's still relatively low mileage. We're expecting a refund check from the seller <laughs> to, you know, to discount the sale of this car. Um, but what I don't understand is why the hell the PPI guy got 4,200 miles because it was 420 ish, 426 kilometers for replacement between two and three. But he sort of missed the big 52,000 kilometer yeah. original replacement, whatever. Um, but we no learned matter. this halfway through the trip. More than halfway. More than halfway. Like, oh, okay. But probably more than, also more than halfway through the life of its third odometer. That's true. That We're like, okay, so the odometer's due for replacement now because it has almost as many mile, uh, uh, kilometers. kilometers on the odometer. It's now 50,000, 51 something now. Yes. Um, so as the original one did when it failed. And we're look, kind of looking through like, okay, the first clutch master cylinder made it nine years. The second one made it nine years. Shit, we're at 20. Yes. <laughs> and that was the one thing the car did that really scared the shit out of me. Yes. So One, the fuel pump. The fuel pump, okay. But you were in the back seat, and I think you might have been on the phone when the oh, yes. clutch stopped working. I was on the phone with Haggerty. Yes. <laughs> the, we were, so we went, the one other mechanical problem that I had is developed an exhaust leak. And that was like the first night when we pulled in the hotel, I did a story, and I'm like, is that an exhaust leak I hear? And quietly didn't mention anything else. We get up the next morning when the exhaust has a chance to cool and everything sort of de-seals <laughs> from itself. From, from, uh, yes. <laughs> like, oh shit, that's that's a manifold. Cause, and it stunk inside the car. Yeah, so if we couldn't you drive window, it with the windows yeah. open. So we found out, found out later when we got home, there's a, there's a uh, gasket missing from the e-brake into the car. And so when you open the windows, it creates a, a vacuum or negative pressure inside the car and sucks fumes right off the very hot and very smelly cracked exhaust into the cabin. Yes. And we knew we were going to be driving through 90 degree weather. So we had yes. to have it fixed. And we went to the first shop and they're like, yeah, no way. Fuck off. Went to the, called the first shop. They were like, fuck off. Went to the second shop and they were like, yeah, maybe later. And we're like, this Fuck afternoon, this. maybe. Yeah, we need Before to get on the, the road. weekend. It's Friday. Yeah. Apparently, everyone waits till Friday to fix their exhaust. I didn't know this. Um, That's what he said. And, and then the third shop, we pull up the shop. There's no one there. We pull in the in the parking lot. I you walk called in. them. Or one of us called yeah, them. Yeah, that's right. And they were like, come on by. Come on and by. We'll be there in 10 minutes. And we walk in and these two guys are staring in complete disbelief at this car. And I'm like, all right, you can laugh. Like, let it go. And they just burst into laugh. Like, it was like I told the world's funniest joke. And they started laughing. Like, what the fuck is that? And I'm like, that is three idiots from San Francisco thinking they're going to get a 43-year-old rover from from Edmonton to San Francisco. And he was like, holy shit. What happened? And I'm like, yeah, exhaust cracked but it wound up just being a little tiny piece of exhaust pipe post cat yeah that just just got a crack in it yep so Um, we went to mcdonald's for breakfast and gave them 76 dollars and 30 cents the best part about that was by the time we walked three buildings down effectively like a block and a half down to mcdonald's got our order to go and by the time we'd walked back they were finishing Yes. They were amazing. Yeah. That it was, was great. Well, I, I, have a, I have Google Timeline, which tells you your, your particulars. We mm-hmm. were at that location for one hour and 13 minutes, including breakfast and shooting the shit and them fixing it. And you guys repairing the rear, win- repairing the rear windows. <laughs> Listen, if they didn't work before and they do work now, I repaired them. Yes. The car might burn to the ground over this Not all of the repair occurred in one location. A lot of the repair happened while you were driving. Fucking British electrics. Okay, so the rear windows didn't work, so I pull the switches out. First, the first thing, there's a cutout switch on the left side of the dash that's like a child safety switch. That wasn't getting power at all. So I'm like, okay, well, it's got to be coming somewhere else, from somewhere else. And then I pulled the switches up, and I saw that each 
window has its own individual power source, power wire that gets split in 75 different fucking ways. But one, the right rear window has a blue and white wire and that's the go up win- uh, wire. That had fallen off. And I'm like, oh, okay. So we will, I'll re- reattach that. That was probably touching something else, shorted the whole thing out and blew a fuse. Hmm, fuses. <laughs> fuses. <laughs> Holy shit. Who did so? This? There is one really accessible fuse panel in the car, amazing, which is attached to the instrument cluster, which is attached to the dashboard on the side of the dashboard appropriate for the market of the car. So they same because dashboard, put it left or right hand yeah. drive cars, and you just put the instrument cluster and steering column on the side based on the market you're selling it's, it to. What was that? That uh, instrument cluster was called a podular. Podular design. Podular design. Yes, <laughs> yes the uh, podular instrument. There's a pod that you could is was modular. modular and you could just throw it on the other side. So, of and, course, yeah. we are all very interested to install the pod on the right side of the dash, but leave the I steering think, on the no, left side. No, I think we should have another steering wheel and like another <laughs> everything. So, you get in the car and you don't know whether it's right hand drive or not. It'd be hilarious. I mean, it, yes. Perfect. Um, we could have anyway. two dual instrument clusters. <laughs> dual overhead it would be like, cluster. uh, like a Ferrari <laughs> FF yep. with the passenger yeah, side little, display. Yep, exactly. Be awesome uh, to to wire them up, and so you could have gauges and yeah. whatever. Anyway, um, as so if it weren't electrically are... compromised enough. So you open the fuse co- panel, and then there's like eight ten, fuses eight in there for, for the like a variety car. of systems, none of which is the system that you are interested in interacting with. Well, there's like one fuse for the right headlight, one fuse for the left headlight. Like so there, out I of think eight there are fuses. ten, eight or ten fuses. Sure, ten. Four of them are for individual one of headlights. each headlights. Right. Yes. And we're like, this is fucking bizarre. There are no fuses for the power windows. There are no, there's no fuse for the lighter. Fuel injection. No fuse for the engine compartment. Like there's a little guide on it. That's of course, like very flammable paper that's touching the fuses. And the Euro cars we noticed has a heat vent directly above the fuse panel. This one doesn't and gets quite hot. Um, And these are non-standard glass fuses from. They were standard then. I don't think so. I've seen them before. They're medium length. Yeah. I've seen short and long, but I've never yeah. seen that length. Like, whatever. Because we, of course, bought replacement fuses that didn't fit. The lighter worked, which was awesome, so we could charge our cell phone and broadcast FM over to the radio from our iPhone. The Learjet radio, which was installed at considerable expense in 1985 or, or, like, four yeah. or whatever. That stereo fucking rocked. Yes. Like, that was, it was really good. Yeah. Um, so I take power off the lighter which works perfectly and i use it to just power the rear windows i'm like fuck it we'll just as a as a as a stop, stop gap. gap we'll just we need to be able to you don't want to drive what was left 16 hours left with with the front windows open buffeting you know wind in your ear you got to crack the rears so i thought worst case i'll put jumper wires i'll pull the door panels off and just you know bring the windows down an inch but i just powered them off the lighter circuit and it worked beautifully initially until you got on the phone with haggerty and needed quiet and all of a sudden we realized the front windows now died <laughs> which i don't think we ever figured out because then we blew the fuse for the for the uh, my lighter city wiring job and windows and the lighter and no the windows aren't rear on windows fuse. oh the lighter that's right, and rear lighter windows. And rear windows so now we have no operable windows yes and it took us about 60 miles to figure out that the that the right hand dipped beam fuse actually didn't do the right hand dip beam headlights that's right because i saw i'm like wait a second we have two fucking headlights which were led and high output because we did an upgrade because we couldn't see a fucking thing um and i'm like i'm looking in the truck's reflection i'm like we got two headlights pull one of those fuses out and sure as shit one of them was blown put a new one in lighter windows the whole thing the front windows repaired themselves while we were driving some as did several other things yeah the central locking fully repaired itself the central locking worked previously only when locking the car and then you'd have from the door and then you wouldn't you'd have to manually unlock the windows the Uh, doors the doors yes sorry and uh then that just repaired itself and now they work perfectly yeah uh Um, what else repaired the visor the melted visor mirrors on the passenger uh, yes they repaired themselves and then broke sort of and then broke again and then repaired themselves again they did that four or five times yeah um we technically repaired the um uh hvac blend door situation Mm -hmm. um it's a bunch of stuff like the list of things that doesn't work on the car is real it's shockingly small i mean it's like air conditioning fog lights don't work because they're not they're not installed yes which May explains have never why they there. don't work yeah but there is a switch so we can wire that switch. to do something else yes. um like maybe fog lights yeah we can put fog lights on it um 
And then, but like the sunroof, we didn't dare open because we knew it was raining. Like you touch this thing, it's just going to let. It's going to get stuck right. open for the yeah. rest of the trip. Um, but air conditioning doesn't work, which we knew kind of, what else? Oh, it's all lights. It's like, you know, like one of the interior lights work, the other one doesn't. One of the glove, there's two glove boxes because it's a symmetrical dash. Dual underhand glove boxes right. instead of. One light works, one doesn't. It's all, we don't know if they, the HVAC panel illumination should be there. But I don't think it's supposed to be illuminated at all. That's pretty ghetto. Um, yes. But let's talk about the driving experience. experience. Yes. Have we covered all of the failures? That's kind of all of the failures, right? The big one the was clutch. The, you do. We're talking oh, about the, the clutch. clutch. So you're on the phone. We're just we're dealing with the windows and the fuses and whatever else. And while driving. While driving at like 25 miles an hour through. We're, we're in Spokane. I don't Spokane. even know how we were. Yeah. And I go for the clutch on a one two shift and nobody home like press the pedal goes three quarters of the way down with nothing and then a little bit of resistance but i'm in gear i'm in first and i'm like rut row fuck and so i lift off do a one to two shift with no clutch i say we got no clutch derek is like hi i'd like to add a car to my policy or four cars to my policy um and jinsu's like what i'm like fuck 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 and we're coming up to a red light and i'm like all right well i'll just pull it out and i pull it out we come to a stop and i'm like what do i do I go back to the clutch felt perfect and i'm like okay now light turns green and i risk you know <laughs> destroying the transmission going in press the clutch went right into first it worked perfectly the entire rest of the way home yes that spike in blood pressure was mm. the was the plateau we saw a, bu a bunch of geological features that were impressive to us one was like all these rolling hills and there's this huge plateau that's perfectly flat for you know miles and i had the question of how the hell does that actually happen like rolling hills and then perfectly flat section but that's what my blood pressure did it was like up and down and up down. Oh, now it's staying at like pegged pegged at the red line mm -hmm. and then from that point on it just it stayed there until the fuel pump started doing it. Yeah, then, that was all the same day. Fuck. That was day oh three. Yeah. Uh, and it was really hot. And I had, yeah, I just, I had had it. I had had it. I yes. I lost my shit. Um, but here we are. <laughs> yeah, we did a border crossing. I was a little bit stressed about the border crossing. I was stressed. And the crazy thing was, like, they didn't ask for duty. They just looked at us in the... I, of course, I just want to be a government worker. And I apologize to anyone out there who's a government worker. Because we get to the thing, and the guy's reaction at the window was, <laughs> what are you trying to do here? Yes, that Which, was what he said. And the, the, the exhaust leak was quite bad at that point. And yeah, so you not, roll up in neutral, you turn the key off. Immediately, right. And like 40 you, feet away. And yes, we just, just roll up silently. Because it's not like a exhaust leak at the back which would be a blah, 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 you know this is a half the engine like it's like an exhaust manifold leak sound yeah, it's, it's just terrible. like a yeah the a, trashiest sound in the world yes it's very percussive and he's like what are you trying to do here and i'm like hi there <laughs> <laughs> we just uh, i bought this car and we're just driving it home and he's like from where and i'm like edmonton to san francisco and he's like and i just hand three american passports and i'm like okay we're home like he's gonna see that we're all americans like it's all good and he was like not having any part of it he's like what are you doing i'm like we have all the paperwork i have proof of ownership where it's insured <laughs> like every way from sunday we all added it to our policies just in case and uh he was like okay we'll just go into that office we go in the office and for 15 minutes they all just looked at us we're just standing at the counter and we're just talking and we're going yeah they're paperwork. all sitting at their desks well back from the front desk the desk right. where we there are a couple standing. of them looking at us and then look back down and look whatever and then a couple guys telling a story about like football or whatever and i'm, I'm like for 15 minutes, like no one even acknowledges that we that we exist. And then out comes this old guy who I hadn't even seen before. He was the only one who gave a shit. And he's like, uh, do you guys need something? No. I'm standing at the fucking border crossing for 15 minutes waiting for no reason. I'm like, yeah, hi. Of course, I have to be nice because they'll seize the car, shoot me and whatever else. And he was like, okay, well, you can't do that. And I'm like, why? And he's like, well, you can't just bring the car in. Is it is it over 25? I'm like, it's 43. And he was like, oh okay hold on uh, i'll just get your paper he said do you have a letter of compliance yeah, from the manufacturer sort of like, yeah. <laughs> and it's yeah, like there is no manufacturer well gone. the manufacturer has not existed in decades yeah. Yeah. um but we didn't quite go into that either We're like no no no. it's it it, it complies and i just said it's oh, it's yeah. it's more than 25 years old yeah and that shut him up so like and then he comes back with his form and he's like all i got to do is check the vin and send you guys on your way and all i kept thinking was thank god we noticed the vin was wrong was correct or was wrong on the 
bill of sale. Bill of sale, the initial bill of sale. So we got that sorted. And he was like, have a nice day. And we just kind of all looked at each other like, are you fucking Yeah, the kidding? total interaction was 10 minutes. Yeah. Like I went pee and you were done by the time I came back from going yeah. pee. And we're like, we just can't believe this. And we were supposed to pay duty, uh, duty, but the car is, yeah, it would have been maybe a hundred bucks, whatever it is. Yeah, because there's an exemption on the first, I forget what it is, $4,000 or something. 800 bucks. So there's an exemption on the first $800 of any goods you bring in. But then you have to then pay on the first thousand dollars of the car it's three percent rate and then it goes to two and a half percent like it's this convoluted like only a government could come yes, up with this yeah. shit um but we just fucked off got the hell out of there as fast as we could because we're like we don't want them to change our mind and be like wait a second you're bringing in a shit box with a broken exhaust yeah um mm-hmm. that works so the import was easy import was easy first time in idaho well yeah same here We'll see about how registering it goes, but it is you. It's EPA compliant. It's a U.S. car mm-hmm. for all all the stickers yep. and badges and shit say on it. So we'll fucking find out. The car was noticeably more reliable than the Mercedes Benz, which sat at uh, that I had that sat at a shop for three months, supposedly getting repaired. Well, but that sh- sat at a shop getting repaired in Italy. As opposed to sitting in a garage in Canada not getting repaired at all. Well, yeah. I mean, the thing is this. So the kid inherited the car when his grandfather passed away. This was kind of crazy. The, the dad's name, last name was Jason. The grandfather, sorry. Mm-hmm. Last original name owner Jason. of the car. Original owner of the car's last Jason. name is Jason. And his middle name is Daniel. My twin is Danielle. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I noticed that right away. I'm like, oh And my his God. last name started with a C, C, Charles. First name started with a C. So it's Charles, oh, Charles. Daniel jason was his yes. name so three first names and i'm like wow danielle and jason that's i grew up being you know we were twins danielle it's danielle and jason so daniel jason and so his initials are cj and minor jc I'm like mm-hmm. okay what i'm not like that weirded out by this but then i look at the phone number and it's my mother's entire phone number with just two digits the last two digits reversed and i'm like well that's fucking weird um yeah. even the seller's dad was like holy shit that's Jason. And I'm like, yeah, that's my mother's phone number right there. Like, it was just, it was weird. It was meant to be. This um, is your car. This is so driving experience. Holy shit. Like, it's really fucking good. It's a genuinely good car. Like, okay, 2.8 turns lock to lock steering mm-hmm. in 1980. Or there 76. Are, 76. There are cars today that don't have steering that quick. Mm-hmm. Not too many of them, but there are. That is modern car quick and in fact i just got in an nsx and drove it around the block and my first comment was oh series nowhere as quick as the rover <laughs> like it's just and it's barely any more talkative than the rovers too mm-hmm. um which is amazing yep it's good power steering it's well rated yeah. weighted yeah. um yeah it's a uh, great steering i was i was concerned about the ride quality because it's a live rear end uh great ride quality generally like there's a few yeah. places where you're like oh it's a live rear end but for the most part like it rides more in that you get a little bit of harshness over bumps that you on over one wheel bumps especially that you wouldn't in a but i i don't think car. most people would notice that it's that it's not uh, look, what we didn't do is slide it around corners or any of the other stuff where you get horrible axle tramp under power. Yes, yes, stuff. the car is famous right. for that. Um, but road, ride quality, it had self-leveling shocks from the factory, which mm-hmm. are wild. They were like mm-hmm. in the shock. It had a little the Nivo pump. mat. Ni- was it? No, it wasn't Nivo mat. Right, Nivo mat is the with Bosch one. I thought uh, it's, it was Nivo. Oh, something. bogey. Yeah, but whatever it was, had a little pump that would use the vertical oscillations of the wheels to, to pump, up. pump up and self-level. Mm-hmm. And so that wasn't working. And when we had all of our 8,000 pounds worth of shit. The, the car had Spax right, uh, dampers right. fitted. So they were the back end was quite droopy with all of our yes. shit in it. Um, but other than I think those those dampers are no nowhere near strong enough to deal with the springs the springs are new also mm-hmm. um so we did get a bit of undulation back i would love to throw a set of adjustable conies in just to be able to pull some some of that bouncing out but rode well mm-hmm. steering is good mm-hmm. driving position is perfect and we never not one of us reached for the adjustable tilt and telescope steering wheel. steering column i didn't because i didn't want to touch it because i didn't want to break it mm-hmm. but driving position is great Clutch is perfect. Brakes are squ- a little high, a little high, but brakes are squishy, but mm-hmm. effective. The, effective. The, the that was one of the things we broke was the rotors. Yeah, they're, blah, 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 blah. Yes, they're, they're they definitely are now warped. But they're one of the wheels bent. There was, you know, there was a lot of vibration Un- because of the, yeah. we think right rear is. Blah, 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 blah. Um, but the amazing thing to me is how fucking slow it is. Yeah, <laughs> Holy it's shit. slow. Three of us plus probably a, at least another what four hundred pounds worth of shit. 
Yes, um, alternators and wheels and tires and luggage and, and your 50 pounds of tools. luggage. Well, that was just a one bag. Tools, that didn't count the yes. laptops and the, all the rest. Yeah. I mean, there was, there was, it was fully laden. It was probably yes. effectively had like having five people Max in it. Max gross. Um, not a blisteringly quick car. Mm. Um, so my thought is. I don't is think you it, could even get a sunburn, let alone a blister from the quickness. From the quickness. But my thing is, if it's if it's going to be slow, it should at least be loud. Mm -hmm. um, we did manage to completely blow apart the rear muffler. Um, yes. Which would start. It had a it rear be, end blowout. <laughs> it certainly did. Uh, so did I, but no one noticed it, thank God. Um, the. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so I think I want to put like crazy loud exhaust on it with a with a cutout, mm -hmm. so we can have it be quiet and then or the idea of that dignified, beautiful, elegant shape sounding mm -hmm. like a fucking NASCAR mm -hmm. is silly to me. So when I buy you guys out, I'll put cam in it and high compression pistons or some stupid shit. Could be pretty zippy because the the Vitesse is three and a half liters and makes 190 horsepower right. from the same displacement. It's all compression ratio and cam okay. timing and probably some fueling stuff. But Ignition. Uh, yeah. yeah, so that uh, is yeah. potentially exciting. Uh, what else? You you have not you said the word Ferrari once yet on this episode. I mean, okay, so there is definitely it was inspired. Look, it's known as the Ferrari five door. You know, by mm -hmm. by particularly a heart of sight rover uh, enthusiast rover but the, the, the someone front. who owns a daytona said that he periodically in, enters his ferrari daytona in events as a two-door uh rover sd1 that's prototype a, that's hilarious <laughs> it does very much have the same front corners and headlight design as a daytona um ish Corners, I will give it. Corners. And then and there a is... a fastback, and it has the scallop has along the scallop perimeter inside. of the car, which is very what? Ferrari-like. What I hadn't noticed was the similarity of the gauges. Yeah, I, I immediately noticed it. As soon as I got on the car, I was like, I feel like I'm sitting in a Ferrari 365 yeah. GTC4. With a 6,000 RPM real line. Yeah, yeah. identical in, in... Almost identical. The yeah. the, ga the needles are shaped slightly, slightly differently, differently, but the, the layout and arrangement is so, so reminiscent yeah. of a 365 gtc And the steering wheel is 100% Ferrari Momo In the US wheel. cars, yes. Yeah. In the British cars they, they have this terrible horrible citroen looking two spoke vomit. padded thing yeah. yes um so yeah you really do feel like you're in a ferrari behind the wheel between the wheel and and the even the shifter there was something about the shifter that reminded me of ferraris i mean it's a big long thing and the, but the shift the shift throws are wonderfully short and mm -hmm. wonderfully crisp. It's a nice gear change yeah. Nice gearbox, um, generally. Yeah. I uh, I genuinely enjoyed driving the car. I begrudgingly found myself liking it. Oh, you begrudgingly were on fucking on the internet looking for Vitesse cars that you could import. Yeah. Yes, as a result yeah. of uh, as a result of my experience. I mean, yeah. this is a car that I've always I, I like. Sort of those weird British cars, and perhaps we should at some point to do a British Leyland episode or discuss yeah. some of these obscure British cars. Obscure because, from, to, from our perspective. And by the way, don't don't be rolling your eyes, audience, because Derek brought up a, a car that I. I actually ovulated all over and left a puddle all over the floor over um, that. There are some pretty obscure, cool British shit things that I didn't even know existed that. <laughs> yes. So, so no rolling your eyes at a British Leyland episode because. Mm. I mean, yes, it's all garbage, but also it's immensely charming and we got super lucky and maybe you will too. If you have a if you have British Leyland problem. Um, <laughs> probably not. Don't, all of don't the bad ones have returned to the earth already. If we if if there's one uh one warning that we have to give to this episode, it's do not try this at home. Yes. Do not try this at home. Do not try it away from home. Do, do not try do it not, anywhere. Certainly do not try don't it in try a house. To get home in do not try it with a mouse. <laughs> Uh, I'm genuinely shocked. It is one of the, I mean, you said this, one of the most trouble-free old car trips ever. I don't think I've ever made it 1,600 miles in anything that age without having any real issues mm -hmm. like that. I mean, no, you know, I, I expected the fuel pump to give out or at least overheat, shut off, well, and, and then come and back. And of course, we were, had just been sent by another of our friends that apparently the folks at Practical Classics, a British magazine, oh. had attempted to and maybe succeeded to drive a Eventually. Rover SD1 across the United States. Uh, and I think that it took them a total of three fuel pumps. The one the car came with, the first replacement, which happened at 40 miles. And then a 20, second... I think they made it 27 20, miles. Yeah. That was the goal. Was like we oh, All we have to do is make it 28 miles and we will have beaten Practical, practical Classics in their effort to get an SD1 yeah. a long distance. But we did it all on one fuel pump. Yeah. Well, we, ha we did have two spares in the car and a third one on order. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yes. So we did have, a, we did spend a lot of money on fuel pumps. Um, but yeah, I don't, I can't really think of anything. The, the crazy thing is resurrecting the car is resurrecting any car 
usually results in huge problems. Yes, um, because you will have done, you know, one. you think about the complexity of a car and the number of things that are happening in any car at any time. The, I mean, it's all, in a, like you say, a Rube Goldberg machine. Yeah. It's so elaborate. There's hydraulics for this, and you look at the plumbing and the engine compartment for the fuel injection and the fuel pressure regulator, and there's just so many different little bits and pieces that all have to be functioning. Try not to think about this when you're on an airplane because they're even more complicated. Right. Uh, but like the consequences are quite a bit quite greater. a bit different. Yeah. You can't just pull over and call AAA if right. something fails on an airplane. Yeah, we were exchanging. Derek was telling us all kinds of stories of like tolerant stack fuck ups that have led to crazy plane crashes. And I'm driving along while he's telling, "Oh, and then this broke, and then that broke," and I'm like, "Stop it." Do not give this car any ideas. You have 25 hours. You've got to, to read stuff to, to stay busy. How about some fucking things with puppy dogs and, and, and rainbows and shit? We read period road tests and everyone was re- glowing yeah. about how good the SD1 was. When that was car new. got pro- pro- some of the best reviews I've ever written yeah. across the board from Universally everyone. liked. But the last paragraph universally every, loved yes it was one i mean they were it won war, world car of the year and I, I think and also european car of the year when it when it debuted i mean it was a big big deal mm-hmm. but to your point uh every pair every last paragraph of every single american article was about it's a fantastic car however <laughs> it will be up to rover and british leyland to like support this thing because if they don't and it's not reliable then right. no one will buy them. Yeah, the quality control will be the determinant of whether this car succeeds or not. And, yes, and it's an immensely charming, enjoyable car that will appeal to the driving enthusiast. However, right, and uh, yeah, and the thing to remember is that three hundred and three thousand total production, only one thousand two hundred and fifty four for the U.S. Mm-hmm. Two of which my friends own. So the, to, for those who haven't watched that episode in high school or in middle school, I had a friend who whose parents had a Red Rover and a Gold Rover. Red Rover got totaled in a head on with a Crown Vic. Um, it was a aborted passing maneuver. John, our dad, couldn't make it. I don't know if I ever told you that. Uh, Alex is in the You recounted seat. it on this episode. On the, on the oh, show. sure about the about the head yeah, on. Yeah, oh, yeah, that was recently. Yeah, the, right, the ro- rover ahead. episode, oh, the rover V eight episode. Ro- yeah. Anyway, anyway, that was a head on, and so the gold rover is a car that they then very generously gave to me every every summer in high school when I came back to the U.S. for the summer, um, and so I have a lot of personal. Affection, um, affection for this car, and why the fuck? Now you derailed me with my forgetting of the. You, they sold three hundred thousand oh, of uh, them, right? And the which... joke was that when he went to go buy, a lot of memories were coming back when we were driving. And one of the stories I remember him telling me is they went to go buy the Gold Rover, um, and they it was Bogo, the buy one get one. They basically threw the red car in free, and it was a nineteen seventy nine. It was the prototype that apparently they had used for emissions testing. Um, and he got it effectively free. So it was almost two for the price of one. And I think they bought him in like 81 or 82. So the cars had been sitting now at that point. So they were unsellable in yep. the U.S. Because people had been traumatized. And it was a, a what now? Uh, because who? Rover had left yeah. the U.S. market in 1971. And this right. was going to be their tremendous welcome back return. to the yes to the yeah. United States market. And that uh, lasted for a year. I mean, and it, when we go through the records for our car, it's pretty amazing. Almost nothing mechanical failed on that car. But a lot of other things did. It was all trim shit, right? Yeah. It was trim and electronics. And it was stupid little shit that would have stopped you from enjoying the car. But mm-hmm. stuff that you don't care about, you know, when it's not your daily transportation and it's 40 and years old. And when you're trying to get home. Right. <laughs> yeah, but it, it never, like there was not evidence other than when it got stolen. There was no evidence of it ever having gotten towed anywhere. Mm-hmm. It was never doesn't start, doesn't run. It was just, hey, this trim piece is making a little bit of noise. Or, hey, the I need central alignment. Central locking central locking and it's shit like that um which is pretty amazing i mean we did get underneath the car we went under my lift thank thanks to the bend packs of the world um we did go under the car on my lift as soon as we got home and looked at it and it's far nicer than i think any of us i thought it was going to be a lot rougher because the car has a little bit of corrosion on some of the body panels in various places Uh, and so i was like man the underside is just going to be swiss cheese underneath super solid fantastic undercarriage and it's one it's I'm you guys were making fun of me. It's got to be one of the nicest rovers left in existence. Like I just don't imagine certainly another in the car. United States. Certainly, yeah. I mean the paint job is like, you know, a $2000 Canadian Mako job for yes. which we have a receipt. Yes. But um the car is just really cl- clearly well maintained, but we saw that the diff had been re- uh, the um drive shaft. Uh, drive shaft has a sticker on it. It had been replaced at some point. Pat's drive Pat's shaft, drive shaft in Edmonton. in Edmonton had done it. We should look it up see if he's still there. Um but like all of the failure points that we thought and we expected, like we wanted to have a distributor and a fuel pump and all these things that could really kill the engine. 
all been replaced. Yeah. Um, so when they resurrected the car, they did pumps, they did fuel filter, they did an alternator. There were a lot of clutch um, master cylinders over the decades yeah. in that car. It's on its fourth, I think. Yeah. Um, and same with brakes, but that's hydraulics. Things don't yes. like to sit. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, we, but yeah, I mean, uh, I think we should never attempt this again because we're going to buy like a three-year-old car and it's going to catch on fire in the first mile after we used up all of our automotive road trip karma. Yeah, that was... I am so shocked by this outcome. I had envisioned many different outcomes and this one was like the, the vanishingly small reach objective. But there was no way we weren't. I'm just, to... it was just a so matter shocked. of how, when are we going to wind up on the side of the road and how do we get out of this? Yes. We'd already hatched plans to rent, rent you haul like, and a dolly and, and right like, like the, i felt a lot of relief once we got across the border just because then it's easier to do a one-way u-haul right yeah that's what the question was could we rent something in calgary and return it in san francisco like a, a, a suburban with a dolly yeah we thought back. about hiring a second car to yeah. do this whole trip that's right just right, to, we were going to do a follow a car vehicle. or at least when we got to calgary just have two cars to go across the border and drive one back just in case i mean none of it and I, that was that, we finally pulled up and i looked at you guys and i'm like okay now i'll finally say something nice about the car holy shit i love it <laughs> but yeah. 25 hours in the seats we were all fine no warm one, warm but i mean 25 hours in three days seats were comfortable yes yeah the front ones <laughs> the front the back back a little bit less so but not yes. bad uh, not bad um yeah so stay tuned for the uh adventure of registering it getting it through small uh, that should be fun. yep um and then bringing it to radwood Yes, we'll bring it to Radwood. I'll vacuum it out because you had a lot of um, Snacks. chocolate that melted. Oh. Yeah. Uh, I'll steam clean the whole inside of the car. I need to do that in my 140 as well. Oh, that's what failed. The headliner. Oh, the headliner. The headliner. Yeah, it was sagging a little bit, but driving... With the windows open. 1,600 miles with the windows open, smashed the... Detached, blue, delaminated. Detached, yeah. uh, oh, well. Hey. But hey. yeah, a little bit of like, uh, the outcome we all hoped for, but maybe uh, less of the holy fuck that was fucked kind of uh, narrative that some yeah. of you might have been hoping for. No, Actually, a lot of people wished us good, good they luck. They really did, but no real oil leaks. I mean, it's just, it's absurd. It's absurd. Yeah. Like the diff, okay, there's a couple drops onto the diff. Like not on the ground, like, you know, it's maybe occasional sweating. drop on the ground, but just sweat it like this. Like, yeah. Nuts. Nuts. Yeah, I'm so shocked. One I am of the so biggest pleased. surprises of the year. It's so. a genuinely charming piece of equipment. I wish that it would have been a shitbox so that I didn't want to now go and find a, and import some European Vitesse in, with basket weaves and a rear spoiler. And that you one's should. probably going to be just absolutely problem ridden. They're all, pro I'm, well, I mean, no, not ours. We have the only problem for Rover in existence. But no, I really hoped I would hate the, driving the car because then I could get, I could have my 30 year reunion with it and then we could sell it on. I have 10 cars already. Now that's 10 and a third. I don't need this many cars, but I really enjoy driving that. So yeah. we'll see what happens Me when we too. drive it around here. It could be, it's so slow. Yeah. Or long, it could just completely catastrophically fail on your first trip locally. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm driving the river to the smog shop. You guys want to join me? No. And then I'm like, uh, Hey guys, can you uh, burn to get the me? ground? <laughs> I'm standing in a pile of ash. <laughs> Very British ash. Yes. Um, okay. Well, like Jason said, don't try this at home or anywhere else. Yep. Uh, okay. That has been episode 102 of the Carmugian show. Part Not a P episode, but oh, whatever. colorful enough. Who can think of the P episode? My blood pressure is still <laughs> yes. way too high to read. All right. Happy trails. Join us next See week. you next oh, week. Hold on. Next week is probably a Fourth holiday. of July. Yeah. The thirth, thirth of July. Thirth of July. Fourth of July observed. <laughs> Uh, observed, so we'll yes. probably not be here. That's probably, probably true. Okay. We'll see you the following week. Great. Happy 4th of July to those who celebrate. Yes. What is it, Jason? Hello. Hello. Weren't, you to, weren't you supposed to read something? Uh, read something. Oh, uh, yes. Um, Lucid had some mm -hmm. stuff mm -hmm. that they wanted us to, to share. Yep. Uh, so, yes, what did they say? Let me read here. Once upon a time, oh, no, wait. Uh, every car module listener knows about the Lucid Air, mm -hmm. the longest range, fastest charging luxury electric car in the world. It's mm -hmm. designed in California, assembled in Arizona, and Jason over there on your side of the screen uh, has made more than a few videos about its incredible performance. What you might not know about, however, is the special lease and finance offers available on 2023 models of the Lucid Air Touring and Grand Touring. 
get a new lease on electric. Visit lucidmotors.com for offer details. Uh, I think that's all that's I have it? to say on that okay. subject. But anyway, yeah, yes. like we've got a sponsor. Great. Mega exciting. Uh, is there anything else we needed to cover? No, I think that's it. Okay, splendid. Uh, then in that case, let's get back to the uh, original uh, episode. Excuse me. Sorry. Mm -hmm. yep, Thanks. No Thanks. Bye. Okay, see ya.